Now for number eight, part A, draw the graph of e to the ax plus b. Well, notice, it's still the graph of e to the something, so the graph will still just look exactly the same as e to the x, only changed in the x direction by a certain shift and a certain compression or expansion. The actual answers won't change. Now e to the x itself looks like this. It's an asymptote to the negative x-axis and it crosses a 1. So the difference this should make is you would move back B and then divide by A. To find your answer at any particular point, you have to go to the point AX plus B, retrieve its answer and bring it back. So that for instance, to find the point that this would move to, I'd have to find where's the point that would end up at 0, such that when I put the number X in, I'd have AX plus B equals 0. So AX would be negative B, so X would be negative B upon A. Which means the answer 1, which belonged to 0, will now belong to negative B upon A. So that's going to shift back to wherever that is. And you'd expect that. Plus B means it should go back. And then A means divide it by A if that's a number greater than 1. Or expand it if it's a number less than 1. And if it was negative, of course, it would be flip it over. But I can also work out what this point here is. Because at x equals 0, I should just have e to the b. So this transform graph should simply look like... It probably has been crushed up a little bit. Something like this. Where the answer 1 has been transferred to this point, which is negative b upon a1. And this point where it's crossing is now just e to the b. One thing that doesn't change are the answers. All the changes are taking place within before you even start to evaluate the answer. So the answers will always be the same, have exactly the same shape. They will never touch or cross the x-axis, unlike the diagram in the back of the book. And for part B of question 8, draw the graph of log n ax plus b. Again, all the changes are taking place to the positions of the answers, not the original answers themselves. Nothing happens after you've settled on your new x-coordinate, it's still ln that's been worked out. So the pattern of the answers for ln, which looks like this, an asymptote to the y negative y-axis and cutting through at 1, will still look like this. They will not shift up, they will not shift down, they will not expand, they will not compress, they'll look exactly like this, only changed in the x-direction, either being by, by being shifted back or forward or expanded or compressed. And what would the answers be? Well, it's ax plus b. That says, if I want to find where this point would go to, I need to find the number that I would put into this that would arrive at 1 and take its answer back, with, back home with it. So, if ax plus b was to equal 1, that means ax would be 1 minus b, and x would be 1 minus b upon a depending how big b is, and of course depending how big a is. That could be anywhere across here. So I'm just taking that as having moved back a little bit here. Same with this asymptote. The asymptote x equals 0. Where will this asymptote go to under that transformation? Well, wherever it is, if I do ax times it plus b, it should take me to 0. So that's going to be negative b. So x is going to be negative b upon a. But again, it's just the inverse of whatever that says. Subtract b, then divide by a. So that says this would be... Its new asymptote is no longer the y-axis. It's going to be the line x equals negative b upon a. On one side or the other, depending on b is positive or negative. It'll pass through this point, but it'll maintain exactly the same shape. So it's going to look something like this. Passing through the point. It's a bit nastier to put it in there. I'll create a wee space for it here. 1 minus b over a. That would be the transformation of the graph.